Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Street Kings by Board to Death. Now, Board to Death is also a reviewing, a reviewing site, but it's also just gone ahead and made a game. And this is the game by Luca Vince Calabriano, and it is for two to six players, about 40 to about 120 minutes, depending on the amount of players and ages 10 and up. In the game, you're going to be playing as a streetcar racer, and your objective is to go and participate in races. And there's going to be different races throughout the game. There's D, B, C, and A races you can do, as well as different types of cars for each of those races. Everybody's going to start off with the basic race uh, type car, which is the D cars, and they're going to progressively increase their stats, as well as increasingly, increasing gain new types of cars. In the game, you're also going to be selecting which type of races and how the races are going to play out based on some hidden different cards you're going to be playing, as well as taking your cars to street shows to gain money, because you need money to win races, as well as to gain money from that, in order to buy new upgrades as well as new cars. Well, all right, let me go ahead and talk about the game and show you what it looks like. So this is the setup for Street Kings, and as you can see over here are all the different player boards that players are going to choose from, and they have double-sided, so you can choose either male or female counterparts for each each of the different types. So you've got Erica and Marco and Coyote Jesse and Moonshine Johnny and so on and so forth. And you select them and you get a certain amount of currency throughout all these as well as the different, all these on the other corner here are different um, upgrades you can get for the cars. Over here are the car shows which you'll be participating in depending on the number of players, how many there will be. Upgrades for your cars which you go ahead and select based on um, the different types of cars out there and different amount of players. Over here is going to be your race boards, whether you get bronze or, um, the, I guess, golden, I suppose, and then silver, and then ultra gold or whatever the best metal is, which you're trying to get seven throughout the game in order to win. Uh, these over here are race tracking to race track cards where you'll be selecting depending on how you're how well you're doing and placing them face down to hide them and flipping them over and then using these to race your cars down this racetrack right here. Now the racetrack's pretty interesting as well because depending on the type of cars you have and what you want to race, you can do a D, C, B, or an A race. And it's kind of going to increase the length of the race, and you're going to input your cars into here based on the different turn orders, and you're going to be racing your cars along this little track here. Here. First person to get to the finish line is the winner. On the uh, right hand side over here are going to be the different types of cars. You have A, B, C, and D cars, as well as the little secondary expansion cards here that will give you bonuses. These guys are like endorsements, so you, can get, you can get money for them for doing certain actions in the game that may or may not benefit you. And that is basically the setup for the game. You get a bunch of cubes that go with it, as well as a tire to pause the game, and this little tracker here to indicate which of the different symbols you're going to be using to race the cars. But that is the setup and all the different components for Street Kings. So you've gotten your player board, you've got the board all set up, and everybody has their character as well as all their different unique little um, cubes here. You also will get a race car, and this race card could be just this little sim this little guy here, or if you have a race car from home, like a Hot Wheels toy or something else like that, you can use that instead. You're going to determine somebody who gets to be the first player, and everybody's going to get a certain amount of cards. Uh, and then after that, you're going to get your sorry, two cars, right? Uh, depending on the number of players. And after that, you're going to have to take a number of actions. One action could be you can go to the dealership and buy a new car and sell your old one. Another one could be to buy upgrades, and there'll be a certain amount of upgrades you can purchase from the upgrade deck that resets every round. You could take your car to the show, in which you can actually gain money based on the show value of the car, which is right next to the currency cost of the car, as well as putting your car into the qualifying matches, which will allow you to gain the privilege of winning on ties. Uh, you will actually, if you both went two, but you were in the top seat, you would actually win in that race. There's a couple other things, but that is the basic idea for actions. Let me go and show you a couple turns. So I've gone ahead and set up for a three player game. The first thing we'll show you is the car shows. It's going to be the number of players minus one. So in a three player game, which we have green, Green, red and blue here it's going to be two car shows the next is the player boards as well as the setup for all the trophies you can put a, a, a token on every single one of these trophy areas as well as all these different unique upgrade tokens here and everybody gets two thousand dollars and this is the money indicator you have everybody's going to get three different types of track cards and you can obtain more through actions when you pick them up over here and you're always going to have three everybody's going to get two d type cars so there's d c b and a cars everybody's gonna get two of these and they can never be the same so if you you draw two of the same ones, you're just going to have to go ahead and replace it. 
after everybody's gone ahead and gotten these different cars, you're no longer going to need the D card deck and you're going to take that away. The next thing we're going to look at is the dealership over here and you're going to see that there's going to be the C's, the B's, and the A type cars and it's going to be one plus the number of players. So in a three player game it's four, four, and four, which means you also won't need these decks as well. Next thing you're going to look at is over here, there are upgrade cards. These upgrade cards are going to be based on the number of players plus one as well. And every round, you're going to add new ones from this upgrade deck. And these ones will get refreshed and be put back into this uh, discard pile over here. We don't need these extra car shows, so they're gone. And as a secondary, um, potentially advanced version of the game, we can include three of these cards that you can take once per turn. And if you can complete them as sponsorship deals, you're going to get money. We won't be showing you that, though. We'll talk about it a little bit later. So now we've got the upgrade shop. We've got the dealership. We've got our own specific cars. Every character's got their own specific cars. And we've got the board all set up with all of the cars. Now we're going to go ahead and take the turns of the game. So the first player who's going to start off is blue. He has the first player marker, which means he gets to take any actions he'd like. He could choose to buy from here, buy from here. He could choose to draw one of these cards, add it to his hand of three cards here, look at them all, and then place them down. These each are going to have different symbols on the bottom of them, of them indicating which type of car will be more useful throughout the race. If your car is good at driving or braking, then this is a card you want to play. If a card is, if your car is good at speed or acceleration, this is a card you want to play, and so on and so forth. So for an action, he could choose to do this, choose one of them, and place it face down. Now, to find out if these are relevant cards for you, you look at your cars, and each car has different symbology on the bottom. The bottom of the car is going to show stars based on how fast or how useful they are for that specific trait. For instance, this one can accelerate and this one has a good handling, so one for each and no points for the other ones. The car's worth value is on the top left hand corner and the car's show value is on the top right hand corner. So 4,000, 1,000 and most of all the D cars are the same in, in that regard. After he's done that, he keeps three cards and he goes ahead and sets that down and the next player is going to take a turn. This game goes very similar to a lot of games where in fact you take as many turns as you possibly can until all three of these cards have been placed on the field. Uh, as an action, you could choose to place a car on the field and you're going to start off by placing it in the first position, second and third, and when that's done, the round is over. Let's go ahead and talk about some other different things you can do as actions. For instance, he's taken his turn, so now we're going to go on to red here and red has $2,000 and here are some upgrade cards. They are all the values of the cards right here and what they can do to be put on your car. You can only have one of each type of upgrade card when it comes to each different type of car. So for instance, let's say that she wants to spend $2,000. She can buy any of these three cars. She can upgrade her speed, her acceleration, or her handling. And she'll look at her cars. This one doesn't have any, um, any acceleration, so she will go ahead and add this to here. Oh no, she can't. It costs 3000 So eh, we'll just give her a speed. So it gives her a boost of one more speed, it attaches to this car, she loses her money, and the next uh, player gets to take their turn. This player says, hmm, okay, well this has already been done, Somebody, maybe I could buy a car if I wanted to, let's see the next cost. Well, the next cost is 8000 so maybe not this race, but the next one. He'll go ahead and buy tires, and he will put it on this car right here, it'll cost him $2,000. So now he's got one for speed, braking, and uh, handling, so that's good for him. And then it would go back to this player's turn. Now you can also take your card to the show, and depending on the number of players, how many shows there are, in this case there's two shows, so you can put two cars, which means you can buy extra cars if you want to, to put them in the shows. And different cars are going to be more valuable to put in shows, while other ones might be more valuable to race. So if he turns his card like this, that means that he's going to send that to the show, and he's going to get the show value of $1,000, giving him one more $1,000, and passing it along. Uh, those are all the basic actions of the game. There's one more, and if everybody's done taking their buying actions or their car show actions, as well as placing these guys down, once this last track is finished, that's it, uh, then you go ahead and place your car into the track. You can do that whenever you want. If you do it earlier, it's beneficial because you can actually win on ties, like I stated, but you're going to go ahead and do that once every single player has done so. That will begin the racing action of the turn. Now all players have qualified for the race, as you see they're over here, which means no more actions are going to take place, and the race is going to be begin. You actually actually have to qualify a specific car, so these are the specific cars they have qualified for. The rest of them are at the show right now or not being used. So you're going to go ahead and for each qualifying car, you're going to add their values to your little track here to make it easier to track them. So one for this one and one for hand handling right there. This has an upgrade, so that's going to give this one uh, two speed. That's pretty cool. And one handling. And this car over here also has an upgrade, so it's got a speed, it's got a handling, and it's got braking, just like that. 
All right, now we've got ahead and kept our money, everything set up, our, our car is right where they need to be. This is the first person who would qualify, second and third. So if any of these tie, the person ahead will be the winner. Now we're going to go ahead and reveal these cards one at a time. The first one will be this one, just like that. We ignore these values right here and we only look at these two right here. We'll start off with the first one, which is acceleration, just like that. And the first thing is acceleration, so we'll look at all of this acceleration marks. Only blue has one acceleration, so he will move up one. We'll next go on to the speed, just like that. And green has one, red has two, and blue has none. So green will go up one, red will go up two, and blue is going to chill. Now we're going to the next one and flip that over. And right there, acceleration. All right, so let's look again. One, zero, and zero. So there, blue takes it again. And finally, the, the wheel. So, no, sorry, the handling. So one, one, and one. Everybody moves up one. After that, you're going to go ahead and go back until somebody's going to win the race. Now, this card is what is important because, as you can probably see right here now, this indicates the winners of the race. So, we will go ahead and start with the acceleration again. Blue has one, red has none, green has none. Now, we'll go on to speed. Blue has none, red has two, and green has one. And acceleration. Blue has the one. And red has the none, and green has the none as well. And as you can see, blue has won the race, so he will be getting the most amount of money. Now you would keep going, obviously, until somebody else had won second and then third, and then given them the appropriate prize pool, which is blue would get four thousand dollars, one, two, three, and four, and then red would get the three thousand dollars, and finally two thousand dollars would go to green. After that, everybody's going to get their trophies based on how well they did down here at the bottom will indicate okay blue would get one golden red would get the silver and green would get the bronze just like that and when you acquire a certain amount of um, trophies based on these tracks here so if blue were to acquire two bronze he would take that one down and it would go one silver if he would acquire two silver he would take those down he would go two gold and until somebody gets to seven of the trophies, that's the winner. The round is going to conclude after that. Everybody's going to replace all of the upgrade cards and restore them, as well as set all their trackers back down because you might be using different cards. And the next player who is passed to the first player token passed to red, we get to decide if they would go to C or stay on D. And you can only do that if you have the specific car for that specific race. So right now they all have D, so nobody could do that. They would stay on D. But if somebody got C, they would move up. And depending on the type of car you have will depend on the race. So if you don't have any C cars, you can't race in a C race. And if you don't have any D, you can't race in a D race. And that's the basic idea of the game Street Kings. So that's how the race goes, and that's how the action goes. That's the basic idea of the game, getting those seven trophies. Now, there are a couple expansions, ex expanded add-ons to the game, one of them being these cards here, which I talked about before, which, as you perform different actions, you can gain different sponsors, which will give you money. You can get one a turn. As well as there's a policeman expansion in the deck of, I guess, road cards, whatever you want to call them, as well as the basic cards we didn't talk about on the row, which indicates uh, an X on certain ones. So the winner of the race with the X cards on them are going to lose certain upgrades. This one says you would lose a speed upgrade if you had one. Um, the police one would actually say you, you could choose to lose either $2,000 or any upgrade of your choice. There's quite a few of these different cards in there. So sometimes choosing to lose a race is, or to take, take second is better than going first because if you get there to the finish line first, that's where the cops are waiting for you and you've just lost money as opposed to gaining money or not gained as much as other people. That being said, that's the idea of Street Kings. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. Well, first of all, Street Kings. It is a solid race game. It works really well with more players, and the two-player variant is interesting. You get two different players per player, which makes it almost a four-player game. And uh, I personally like it. I think it works really well from the three to five-player range. It gets a little long at six players, but it still works just as well. And depending on your actions, everybody kind of has the same ideal like stat allocation it's just gonna be based off of the car the type of cars you get and the type of cards that are placed down as well as how you're allocating the money to buy new cars so you're always having that you're always neck and neck with your opponents and sometimes you're gonna just choose to not race and as opposed to gaining uh, money or having other players suffer the consequences of racing and getting hit by the cops the extra add-ons like the cops and the X cards are really fun and I really do like the sponsorship cards I think they're very fun to uh, 
try different methods to gaining that money. Now, obviously, winning those gold medal races is really, really important. That's basically how you win the game. But you can choose to either wait and save up for a really nice car or progressively in in improve your cars and keep the races as slow as possible. And based on the players whose next turn it is, is going to determine where the races are going to take place and how far the races are at. Another thing is this little tire thing which indicates a pause in the game. Maybe somebody has to use the restroom or take a break. I think that's basically what it does. If you put it on one of these street signs here and it'll pause the game for a moment. Maybe that's as you're going ahead and fiddling with the cars and stuff. But yeah, a wonderfully thought out game. It looks great. The cars look wonderful. The complete setup looks great. This is a solid, this, this game takes me back to initial day or initial D. Where I start seeing the the races going around the tracks and super fun because you're tr you're trying to outwit and outmatch your opponents. The uh, difference between this game and that one is this one's a lot more of the customizable type of game, whereas that one is more of the pressure luck style game. This one has a lot of actions you can take, and it only it almost reminds me of Francis Drake in a way of do you want to qualify your car as soon as possible to win on those ties, or do you want to try and get it as customized and gain as much money as possible? Because once you go ahead and put your car in the race, you are done taking actions. Altogether, though, a very, very solid racing game. If you are a fan of racing games, I would highly suggest this game. Obviously, you should go ahead and uh, consider it yourself and debate it whether or not you think it's worth it. But for me, I think Bored to Death did an excellent job, and I'm very happy to support Street Kings.